when you start Range Rover, the control knob for the gears pops up out of the center console. This beautiful metal embellishment just makes this look a million dollars and the knurling around the outside of the knob just looks fantastic. There's also additional knurling at the controls. There's buttons here for controlling sound, radio, etc, etc. There's these fabulous anodized metal, thank you very much, paddles. Best of all is this infotainment system, 10.2 inches or thereabouts, easily divided up into four areas on the home screen. These buttons are available to you permanently. The cameras you can call up at any time and they'll give you a 360 degree view of the car. Your parking sensors and this is to park automatically. Pressing it will cause the app to open up both here and up in the driver's binnacle. You then suggest to the system that you'd like to park perpendicularly or parallel and it'll also help you get out of a parallel spot. This is SatNav, your phone, music and this is a particularly excellent feature. Here you can also watch TV, whatever channel you like, and each of the passenger seats has a viewing screen that can watch a different channel. Not only that, it's got a mysterious dual function screen. So on that side, you'll see that it's got TV. But if you come over this side, you'll see it's got driver's information. TV, driver's information. Now that I think is a particularly clever feature and I've not seen it and I've not seen it in any other car. Here you can access your rear media, cameras, web browser, seats etc. Seats for example is where you can give yourself a massage, adjust your temperature by simply selecting the seat that you want. The rear seats have heated, heating and cooling. The front seats have heating, cooling and massage. You turn the massage on and up pops the graphic. So let's turn that off. Settings are easily accessible and for a change it gives you a great way to access anything at any time. Just your audio settings or you can Go to the seat settings or all settings and this is how you turn on the dual view monitor so that either it's a single view which is the whatever the driver wants to see or you can make it dual view and have tv on one side and driving information on the other particularly interesting is the driver's instrument panel this panel is one lcd screen that is divided up clearly you can bring the menu up by simply pressing the OK button on the steering wheel. You scroll through what you might want to change. Here is the forward alert, autonomous emergency braking, reverse traffic detection, and that will tell you when you're reversing, reversing out of a park spot whether or not someone's coming behind you. Let's go back into that menu again. This is where you can change the display to its trick settings. Clicking this button will make the entire screen sat-nav. You'll notice along the bottom there are the readouts that you'd expect normally. Fuel, fuel use, fuel tank, odometer, temperature, time and the all-important speed. To the left you'll also find the height gauge. Currently this car is parked and has squatted to let me out. Here is the height button. You can adjust that up and down and the car will squat when you get out making it easier. There's about 10 centimeters or so difference between the top setting and the low setting. This car is also equipped with a 
500 plus dollar option of wade sensing up to 900 millimetres of water. Traction control off, speed limiter which is incredibly important for a 405 kilowatt engine. But it's also equipped with stop start and stop start reduces your fuel consumption by switching off the engine when you're at traffic lights. The drive mode selector you can leave in automatic most of the time. The car is incredibly clever. You can engage low gear range by pressing this button and you can engage downhill descent assist with this button. But if you take it out of automatic you have a range of settings. So there's rocks, sand, mountains, snow, road. Let's just leave it in automatic. Let me show you again what happens when you turn the engine off. I'm going to put my foot on the brake. Now the parking brake is off, the car's going, and it's in sports mode. But if you turn the engine off by switching here, the off button, it places itself in park, activates the parking brake and turns the engine off. And that is so that no fuel gets out to open their gate and forgets that the car is still in drive with the handbrake off and gets themselves run over. The steering wheel is logically laid out with buttons for volume, menu, speed control and cruise control and this is smart cruise control so it works right down to zero kilometers an hour. Heated steering wheel, voice and phone. This car also has high beam assist. Put your lights into automatic and you can activate it up here. Up on the top of the door are the window controls, mirror controls and window isolation switch. Below that, the seat memories and door lock and unlock. These memories will also remember the position of the mirrors even when you put it into the reverse dipping position. When you put the car into reverse, the mirrors will automatically dip. And that's so that I don't scratch up the mags. And believe me, you do not want to scratch up these mags.